Heading towards 2023 na tayo, guys. And probably one of the questions ay tatanin sa akin ko, anong phone for 2023 do I think would be okay? That is falling around somewhere below 15,000 pesos. And I have here is the OnePlus Nord C2 Lite 5G. And this phone feel ko would be okay for the start of 2023. And I'll tell you why after this quick intro. So hi guys, I'm Palacios from the Gadget Psychic and welcome back to my channel. So this is the OnePlus Nord CE2 Lite 5G. Tignan natin, the box is pretty nice. Pretty nice, puro Nord do. And alam naman natin si OnePlus, maganda na maganda track record when it comes to mga Nord series niya. And what I have here is a 8 gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of storage, and ang color niya is black dust. And we also have another color which is the color blue. So quickly, buksan muna natin. Inside, we have a small pouch. Inside this pouch, we have a smaller pouch. Pouch exception. SIM ejector tool. Welcoming note from Nord. Safety guide and quick start guide. Of course, ang kanyang jelly case. Ang kanyang gilid is frosted. Ang kanyang likod is clear. Ito na ang phone. Saan natin? Looks nice and premium looking ang kanyang phone. What I like dito is matte finish ang kanyang likod. So definitely, hindi siya fingerprint magnet. Sa iba pa pansin ko, medyo manipis lang ang kanyang camera bump. So medyo mahirap ikabit ang case niya, no? Medyo ipo-force fit natin siya para pumasok lang. So pagpasok, fit na fit lang siya. And sa likod kita natin, it's the transparent color. So kitang-kita natin ang ganda ng kanyang color. And sa gilid, frosted ang kanyang color. Other things inside the box, ang kanyang traditional na red cable. 33 watts na fast charging brick ang kasama. So pasyalin ko lang kayo dito sa phone nito Sa lalim na sa loudspeaker, type C port, microphone in, and of course ang kanyang audio jack. Side, andyan ang kanyang fingerprint scanner slash power button. Sa baba, ang kanyang noise cancelling mic. On the other side, kanyang volume rocker, and of course ang kanyang SIM tray. Sundutin natin. Kita natin, it's a hybrid. So either go for dalawang nano SIM na 5G or isang micro SD plus isang 5G na nano SIM. And of course, a quick reminder, don't forget to SIM register your SIM card para hindi kayo ma-disconnect. And hawak natin here is the color blue. Agad lang ng kanyang color, no? Kita natin, it's a little bit more a lighter blue on top. Downward, parang gradient siya. And what I like about this one is matte finish siya, meaning hindi siya fingerprint magnet. And what I have here is the 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage. And itong phone na ito is being equipped with the latest na Snapdragon 695. It's a 5G chip, 6 nanometer, and octa-core na rin siya. Powered by the Adreno 619 na GPU, I think this one can game. And of course, malalaman natin in a little bit later. And before that, pakita ko lang sa inyo ang score niya sa Antutu Benchmark. And this is the score na makukuha mo. Near 400,000 points. For me, at that price point, halos 400,000 mo sa Antutu Benchmark, it's something. It means that this phone can definitely perform given na kanito ang benchmark mo and of course, ang breaking down the score, ganito ang makikita mo. Now, since sinabi ko ang phone nito has a nice GPU, it was able to score a decent point here sa One Knife. Pagdating naman kay Geekbench, okay din ang kanya score. Swiping left and right, it's very smooth dahil meron siya 120Hz of screen refresh rate, 6.59 inch, well, actually 6.6 .6 to be exact, ang kanyang screen size and it's a LCD display, IPS LCD. But of course, don't you worry dahil ang ganda ng kanyang resolution given na IPS LCD siya. Pero ang kanyang IPS LCD panel is, I think, yung mga high grade. Hindi yung mga medyo low end and the colors are punchy. Halos it can rival the AMOLED display. Hindi nagkakaloy ang kanyang mga color resolution. And this phone also has a touch something rate of 240Hz. Meaning, pagdating sa gaming, wala ka problema. Hindi yan maglalag and hindi mabibiting ang iyong mga pagpipindad dito sa phone na ito. Now, after trying this for roughly 2 weeks dito sa akin channel, and I know that very nice ang kanyang feel. I love the feel. Ang gaan niya, no? And this phone is only weighing at around 195 grams. Hindi pa nga siya umabot ng 200 grams. I feel na magaan siya. And I love the way it is. Ang kanyang feel sa likod. Smooth na smooth sa aking kamay. I love yung form factor niya, no? Very simple lang. And I love yung camera bump niya. Dahil manipis siya, eh hindi makapal. Lalo lang kanyang camera module is hindi na siya protruded out of this one. The phone na ito was able to achieve a level 1 wide-band security level. And it means na 
when you're watching mga HD dito sa Netflix and other online streaming apps, you will be watching it in full HD. And, and watching some of my favorite shows dito sa Netflix and of course sa YouTube, I was able to enjoy it dahil maganda na maganda panel. I did not say na when it's not AMOLED, pangit na siya. Itong panel niya, I think it's good. Was able to say na punchy naman ang kanyang colors. It's even close to the AMOLED display. Now, probably one of the things that hindi ko masyado gusto dito is medyo malaki ang kanyang punch hole dito. And ang kanyang chin is a little bit thick. And this phone also has a 84% screen to body ratio. Now, itong phone na ito, meron siyang 5,000 mAh of lithium polymer na battery. And it can support up to 33 watts of fast charging. Tinatapos itong charging na itong phone na ito for me ha, in just 1 hour and 30 minutes. Medyo mabilis naman siya dahil super book charge na siya. And of course, uh, was able to last me a full day on normal usage. And I can say na at the end of the day, uh, on my normal daily average usage, nakapagtira pa siya ng around mga 40% ng battery. Meaning, this one is very efficient ang kanyang battery dito sa phone na ito. Now, one of the things na gustong gusto ko dito sa phone na ito is browsing the social media sa Facebook, sa TikTok, sa Instagram, and siguro sa Twitter. Ang pag-scroll mo dito sa phone na ito is very smooth. 120Hz of screen refresh rate is definitely very smooth. And I can say na wala naman siyang sabit, no? And of course, yung mga video loading is depending on how fast yung internet mo. Napag-usapan naman natin a little bit about itong camera module niya. It has a 64MP na main camera lens, 2MP na macro lens, and 2MP na depth sensor. And sa harap, meron siyang 16MP na Sony IMX471 na sensor. Which means it should be able to take in some really decent shot when taking some selfies. And after taking this phone for a ride, I was able to take in some really nice shot outdoors. Very punchy ang kanyang colors. I was surprised no, na dahil uh, yung kanyang Snapdragon 695 was able to enhance yung mga photos niya, giving the photos a little bit more clearer and probably yung optimization niya dito sa phone na ito, yung camera optimization is probably good. And kanyang AI engine is kicking in, giving me very nice and very punchy colors Lalas outdoors. Now, sa indoors naman, it was equally good. I was really surprised din sa kanya na this phone was able to perform even sa low light. And taking in some of these shots na may halogen bulb, ang ganda. Magandang ka ng resolution. And zooming in, uh, taking a 64MP na shot, it was really clear. Tiyan mo, hindi siya napipixelate. Really nice. Now, trying some selfie shots, I can see na dalaga maganda siya. Dahil siguro Sony IMX siya and I know na mga Sony sensor is definitely producing some really nice and very decent shot dito sa phone na ito. And I did also try to use it sa mga Zoom meetings and it was really nice. Sabi ng kausap ko sa kabila, ang ganda ng, ng resolution ng aking camera pagdating sa Zoom meeting. Probably mag-stand out nga dalaga when you use this phone. Guys, right now, I'm vlogging using the OnePlus Nord CE2 Lite. And this is the resolution you'll be getting if you're using 1080p, 30fps. And of course, the same resolution applies to both Zoom or when you're using for vlog or even just simple Viber video chat. Any comments? Hit it on the comment section below. Now, like I told you, the phone na ito meron siyang 240Hz of touch sampling rate. And I want to try it on dito sa phone na ito for gaming. And trying it on Call of Duty Mobile, ito ang max setting na nakuha natin. And during the gameplay, I can say na okay siya. Smooth naman siya. Then, what I like about this one is hindi mainit ang likod ng, ng case, no? So, after playing for one and a half hours and winning a lot of games, masasabi ko siya ang kanyang uh, init is nadidisipate na maayos. Roughly, it's a 42 degrees Celsius ang kanyang pinakamainit on max setting dito sa kanyang uh, graphic setting dito sa game na ito. And the gameplay, for me, it's smooth. Ang the only thing na hindi ko masyado nagustuhan dito is probably yung punch hole na which is taking a little bit more space dito sa aking viewing angle. And overall, I can say ang kanyang touch is really responsive. Wala naman na feel na naiwan ang aking touch. No? Though, there are still some time na meron kong team frame drops. Maybe dahil hindi siya makapag-perform up to siyempre mga Snapdragon 888. Iba naman ang ibang liga naman yun. But, and this phone, I can say, okay siya. Okay, okay to pang gaming on this budget level. And definitely, if you can get this for 11,990, I can say it's really a steal. Now, after using this phone for two weeks, ano masasabi ko? 
One, ang ganda ka ng form factor. Two, magandang kanyang camera buff. Hindi siya makapal. Dahil pag nilagyan mo sa table, hindi siya masyado nag-wobble. Kunting-kunti lang, oh. Siguro pag nilagyan mo ng case, mawawala ng tuluyan ang kanyang wobble. And of course, ang kanyang camera is probably one of the better ones from OnePlus. Dahil siguro sa Sony IMX ang kanyang sensor, giving you better shots sa front camera. And of course, ang kanyang display, it has a 120Hz of screen refresh rate. Meaning, grabe, smooth na smooth ang yung browsing experience dito sa social media and sa gaming. Now guys, what did I think about itong phone na ito, si OnePlus Nord C2 Lite 5G? And this phone is being priced at $49.90. It's somewhere below $15,000. And pag nakaabot ka ng mga sale, I'm pretty sure that this phone is a lot much lower than $49.90. Depende sa promotion and depende sa buwan. And depending, of course, kay OnePlus kung anong promo ibibigyan nila for the succeeding months, of course. But for me, at the start of 2023, itong phone na ito is definitely a performer. Given that this phone has a Snapdragon 695, it's a quite a good performing chip together with the 8 gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of storage. Quite ample enough for me. And definitely, itong phone na ito running inside Oxygen OS is smooth. And especially that this phone is running inside Oxygen OS Ang smooth niya dahil halos wala siyang bloatwares and mafe-feel mo talaga halos vanilla Android ang feel nito phone na ito. So guys, if you want to check kung saan niyo pwede mabili ito phone na ito, I'll be dropping it on the description box below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, click nyo na yung bell icon para hindi naman miss mga future uploads dito sa akin channel. So kapala sa Richmond and you're watching Gadget Psyche. Watcha!